This is the 2015 Volkswagen Beetle with a convertible roof and the 1.8 turbo engine. Now I'm told this car is a babe magnet, so I'm going to park it here for a while and see if we can magnetize a babe. So what do you think of this VW Turbo? I think it's really great. I've actually been wanting to buy one. I think I'm going to get one now after checking it out. Oh, and you want to test drive one, right? Yes. If you hit something, hit something cheap. Okay. Okay? Got it. That pull you hit put a big dent in the back. I don't think Volkswagen's going to be too happy. Oh, no. I'll get some Bondo and cover it's it up. Only, yeah, it's a minor scratch. Yeah, we they, they won't out. notice. We could probably buff it out. Yeah, they won't know. <laughs> Are you going to trade in your Jetta? For this car, yes. Okay, only we made a sale. Jetta. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where'd she go? Yep, says right here in the window sticker, Babe Magnet 30-day free trial expired two minutes ago. Eh, just my luck. Well, the sexy babe is gone, but the car is still here, so let's continue on with the official test. Now, before I discuss this car in particular, I want to discuss convertibles in general. And there's two things you might notice about this vehicle. Number one, the top. Notice the color. And number two, notice the interior color. Both are tan. And this brings us to a number one rule for future convertible buyers. Never, never buy a convertible with black interior, as in black seats. Bad, bad idea. Black attracts heat like a magnet. You park a convertible out in the sun for a couple hours, you sit in it, it's like a chicken in a frying pan. I can't begin to account for the number of people I know that have bought convertibles with black interiors. They regretted it. Of course, in the wintertime, you don't have to worry. And if you live in Alaska, you don't have to worry. But anytime the sun is out, then you have to worry. Same with driving with the top up. Black canvas attracts heat like a magnet as well. That's why they don't last very long. The heat destroys them. This tan top is very cool, reflects heat, makes for a cool interior. In fact, whether convertible or hardtop, getting black paint can be a downside anyway. A few weeks ago, we had a black vehicle sitting out in the sun. It was 110 degrees outside. We had got a thermometer laser reading. The surface temperature of the black car was 184 degrees versus 120 degrees for the white car and 130 for the blue car. Now the temperature gauge tells the story. This car has been sitting all day. It's already 108 degrees outside. I just got in. The air conditioning hasn't been turned on yet, but I'm still relatively cool. If this vehicle had a black interior, I'd be roasting alive before I even started the vehicle. And that's the difference. Okay, enough with my top lecture. I'm sure you want to look at the car, so we'll start with the soft top. One button press. Volkswagen gives a downtime of 9 seconds, which I found to be pretty close. Now having the top down doesn't affect trunk space, but that's not saying much. It's only like about 5 cubic feet in there. Okay, part 3, going to the engine choices. This is a 1.8 liter, putting out 170 turbocharged horsepower. It's hooked to a 6-speed automatic gearbox with automatic or sport mode or manual override mode. There are some manual transmission options but you need to look at the VW website for the latest update on that. Things have a way of changing. This combination is good for 24 MPG city, 32 on the highway. There's also a turbo diesel option good for up to 40 MPG on the highway. MVW has their 210 horsepower R-Line Rated 23 to 31. Now we did test the Beetle R line with the bigger engine and six speed manual transmission about six months ago. We'll have a link for that test at the end of this video if you want to watch it. Now the cabin does have some excellent features. For one, the quality of workmanship and materials is very good. In fact, I would say excellent. 
Get a very nice, easy to use, and easy to read gauge cluster. Simple steering wheel controls. And my favorite, a very simple to use climate control system. Just three knobs and a couple of buttons, the way it should be. Compare this to some of those little tiny buttons and graphic designs we get on Oriental cars. This is far, far superior. Glove box size is adequate. We get an extra box up here for paperwork. Well, the downside. Not much room in this center console. The rocker panels under the door are a bit too wide. You're always rubbing your pants on the outside. If you're driving in mud, you can get your pants dirty, so you need to keep this clean. The leg room for rear passengers is okay if the seats are forward, but if they're all the way back, you better not have any legs at all. And the dash does have a tendency to reflect into the windshield. Here you see the air vents. And up in here, you can see more air vents. Now I must point out that these little flaws I've pointed out so far are minor, no big deal. Not a deal breaker, I just have to show them to you because they're there and we're reviewing the car. However, there is one gripe I found inexcusable that concerned the sun visors. They do fold down, they do go sideways, but they do not expand. And with all that glass, and an outside temperature today, it's going to be running around 112. The sun is going to be coming through the side glass here and baking my face. Not good. And if Volkswagen's watching this, you guys need to fix this. We've done our daytime driving. Now we're going to do our night driving and see how these headlights work in the dark. Now an O-beam, notice the difference on the left where they cut off rather sharp in order not to blind oncoming traffic. But they elevate to the right so you can see street signs. Very clever. Not only good for city driving, but for back roads too. Now the high beams are being done at 300 feet. And the low beams. Again, sharp cut off on the left but more than adequate on the right. I'd say this is a pretty good system. No complaints. Getting fuel consumption figures is difficult on this car because the computer likes to reset itself every time you park it. But this is a result of one 50 mile highway trip around 70 miles per hour. And you'll be happy to know this turbo engine takes regular 87 octane when it comes time to fill her up. Well, I think this is a nice looking car. I had one just like it last year, and to get an opinion of onlookers, I did a man on the street interview to see what they thought of it. Let's roll that tape. All right, to get the opinion on this Volkswagen, let's go to the man on the street, someone who has some transportation here. How you doing, sir? Hey, how are you? You like my ride? <laughs> well, it doesn't get good gas mileage as mine, I think, if it's running. No, I don't get good foot mileage either. <laughs> so tell me, if you were going to replace this cart with a vehicle, what would you think about doing it with this Volkswagen? Yeah. Do you think you'd have more room? Uh, probably so, yeah. A lot more room. But maybe not in the trunk? Yeah. Well, the trunk's got good size spaces. The trunk's in the front, right? No, trunk's in the rear. They no, don't do that anymore. They don't do it anymore? No, don't do it anymore. Huh. I don't know. I, I, don't, I haven't seen what how big the trunk is. But... Uh, damn, be sure sure enough room. There is no trunk. In I don't think we could fit all of this in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I probably wouldn't want to put that in there anyway, unless I bought it. it mm. Bought the van. Well, well you're saving up enough cans of stuff. Uh, this is only around thirty thousand dollars. You think that's a good price? Thirty thousand? Yeah. Wow, I ain't paid for a car in so long. I guess it would be. Sounds like a lot for a bug, huh? Yeah, it does. Well, they start at 20,000. Does that make it sound better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, lots of luck on your venture here. Yeah. You want a drag race? I want a drag race? Yeah. Oh, no. I bet you five bucks. <laughs>
I already you gave you five bucks. Five bucks I got. Uh, <laughs> you took my last five bucks I got. You got it backwards. <laughs> yeah, but you got a nice. If I didn't have a full tank of gas, I'd be walking too. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. All right. Thank sir. you very much. You take care. Now, getting to the car itself, most people buy German vehicles for their great driving characteristics. So we're out here on our private test track to see just how this performs. Now I do have to say this is one of the most impressive small engines I've ever driven. It's about as smooth as a turbine, about as quiet as an electric vehicle, and power delivery comes on just when you want it. As expected, there is some wind noise around the top at high speeds, but it's nothing to worry about. You'll get used to it. And high speed stability is excellent, even in the high winds I have right now. Now I'm not going to do any panic stopping. I have too much stuff in the car. I don't want it flying around, but I will do a quick stop. Yeah, the brakes are perfect. Excellent feel, great response. No complaints here. So we'll give it a run with the top down, see what happens. By the way, you can put the top down, it speeds up to 30 miles per hour. See? Well, we definitely have a draft, but I'm not complaining. It's 110 degrees outside, and that breeze feels real good. Now while this Beetle isn't a sports car, the handling is still excellent. More like a sports sedan. There's a very little body lean as well. So far we haven't mentioned ride quality and I can tell you the suspension is very smooth. Soaks up bumps with ease. As I found out on this very rough desert dirt road. And back on the road again. Here's my take. Yes, there were some complaints about the sun visors and other interior features. On the other hand, as far as performance goes, no problem here. This vehicle is fast. Handles like a champ, excellent brakes, and good high-speed stability. And for everyday driving, it's smooth, quiet, and very economical. If you like German engineering and performance, this vehicle is definitely worth a look. And keep in mind, the hardtop version of this is around 300 pounds lighter for better performance, and less expensive to purchase, too. Now if you'd like to see the video test we did on the R-Line Turbo, simply click here.